good morning. For those of you who don't know, my name is Maya Karen. I run a fashion blog called Classically Kept. It does feature luxury, contemporary, and how to style and now natural hair care. So if you were into any of those things, please consider subscribing to my channel. Click the notification bell. That way you will never miss a video. So today we are going to talk about personal style. We're going to talk about six reasons as to why you may not be able to find your personal style and what's kind of stumping or why you're fumbling. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first things first, please excuse the acoustics. There is no furniture in this house and we have not yet got our countertops, okay? So the first reason is your fantasy self. And let's really quickly talk about what the actual definition of fantasy self is. So it is highly idealized image of not only who you want to be, but also who you want others to perceive you to be. So simply put, I will give you two examples. You have a closet full of cocktail dresses, heels, five inch heels, four inch heels, sunglasses, boas, furs, and you're a soccer mom and you have not been to cocktail hour in three years. That is not your life, that is not reality. Another one, you have sundresses, sun hats, you have peros, you have bathing suits, you have bikinis, you have flip flops, you have sandals, and you live in Anchorage, Alaska. That's just not reality, okay? So once you can actually step away from your fantasy self and actually acknowledge how you actually live your life, then you will be able to find your personal style. There is a way to be stylish in Anchorage, Alaska without having to, not fantasy self, but without having to wear the sundresses and the bikinis. You'll freeze for more than half of the year, right? There is a way for you to be a cute and sophisticated soccer mom or a stay-at-home mom without you having to have the furs and the four-inch heels and the cocktail dresses. You don't go to cocktail hour. You haven't been to cocktail hour in three years. Those clothes are just going to sit in your closet, okay? That's for yourself. The perception of other people is something different. And sometimes we do get caught up with that. I know a lot of times you will hear it, you will hear referred to it as keeping up with the Joneses, right? If there is this new Chanel bag that's out and it's a clutch and it's very much shiny, something that you would wear to a gala or to a cocktail, and you're a stay-at-home mom, you don't, or, or you're not even a, a stay-at-home mom, but you're just someone who does not get invited or that's not your life. You don't need that. Yes, it's cute, but it's also going to sit in your closet, okay? So the first thing that we have to do is we have to stop living through our fantasy self or our fantasy life, okay? Number two is going to be organization or your closet is a mess. Whether it's one of those closets that you open and things are just lined up right here, whether it's a walk-in closet, whatever type of closet you have, organization, it's a mess. You have summer things out when it's winter, you have winter things out when it's summer. You have things that are hidden. And I know for me, out of sight, out of mind. Ever since I have gotten, I can say semi-pack system because I, Ikea is still playing games, so it's not done. It is for an aesthetic and I have always wanted like an entire room as far as a walk-in closet. But when I tell you when all of my things are laid out also in the right season, it makes it so much easier for me to be able to see what it is that I have, what it is that I need, and maybe like what it is that I'm missing or maybe something more that I need, you know, more of. Also with color. I know a lot of people just kind of, even when they do the organization or even when they hang things, also color. I know a lot of people follow the Roy G. Bib, which is basically the rainbow and how some people do their closet. You will also notice a lot of times when you walk into a store, all of the colors are together. Not necessarily in the Roy G. Bib, you know, color, color scheme, but all of the blacks are together. All of the grays are together. All of the blues are together. So that way when you walk into your closet, you're like, hmm, I'm feeling green today, I'm feeling blue today. No, I just wanna go all out Morticia and I wanna do black. You can go to your black section and you can pick out what you're looking for. If you have five black pieces over here, 10 black pieces over here, and then two in the back of your closet or in your drawer, you're going to go to this one and then you're going to, let's say it's a top, and you're going to go over here and pick out your bottoms. You're not even going to be thinking about the ones over here, the ones in your closet. And then if you happen to glance over there, you're going to say, oh, well, I also have those. And then also the other thing is I also hang stuff by length. So I have all of my skirts together, color coordinated. I have all of my tops together, color coordinated. And then I all have my dresses together, but they're um, 
hung by length. So I have mini, I have midi, and um, I have midi and T-length, and then I also have maxi. In my IKEA pack system, there is an entire section devoted to maxi, and then it is color coded, right? But I might have a maxi dress that's long sleeve. That's going to be packed up unless it's one of those, um, I guess you could say, not skins, but one of those Amazon dresses that I showed you for the house. The house dress, that will always stay out in my closet because I wear those in the house all the time. That is not contingent upon weather. But I do have a very long, a very voluminous white maxi dress that is long sleeve. That right now is packed up because it's too hot in the Carolinas to wear that. Yesterday, I believe it was 96 degrees. It doesn't need to be out if the weather does not permit me to wear that, okay? So the second reason is organization. Okay, number three, you copy someone's style, and not necessarily their style, but you copy someone's outfit verbatim. We are supposed to use, when we see somebody's outfit, we are supposed to use it as an inspiration. I will give you an example because it happens all the time. You're on Pinterest and you see this gorgeous outfit, cute outfit, or sophisticated outfit. You have been able to find every single piece that person has purchased and put that outfit together. You go to that store, you buy all of these pieces, whether it be you try it on in the mirror and it doesn't look good, or you take all of the stuff home and it doesn't look good and you have to return pieces of that outfit. And there are several reasons why, I would just name a few. So maybe this person has red undertones and maybe you have yellow undertones and the color doesn't look good on you. Maybe that color washes you out. Maybe the exact same thing as far as like body shape is concerned and knowing how to dress your body, which will segue us into the fourth point. But there are just so many reasons as to why you taking someone's outfit verbatim, basically a copy and paste, there are several reasons why it may not look good on you. Another example, maybe they have a T-length skirt or dress on. Typically when you are petite, T-length does not look good on you because it makes you look even shorter and it kind of shortens you, unless, especially when you do not have on heels. That person might be 5'11", you might be 5'1", okay? So when you're looking at someone's outfit, what I want you to do is I want you to, pick, if you like the entire outfit, that's fine, but I don't want you to be disappointed when you have found the entire outfit and all of the pieces of that outfit doesn't work for you. So when you're looking at someone's outfit, I want you to figure out why you like the outfit. Is it the color? Is it the fit? Is it the style? Is it the sleeves? Is it, you know, what specifically do you like? And if you find that, happen to find that exact same person or you follow this person who you consider to be a fashion guru, figure out what it is about their outfits that you really love and then you'll be able to hone in on what it is that you really love and you'll be able to figure out what looks good on you. Which is going to segue me into my next point and I know this is going to hit some nerves, but the reason why you can't find your personal style is because you don't know how to dress your body or you do not know your body type. I know this is going to hit a lot of nerves, but all trends and all clothing is not made for every person and it is not made for every body type. I will give you myself as an example. I do have a definition when it comes to my waist, but I consider myself a triangle. And the reason why is that even though I do have waist definition, I am, aside from that, I am basically up and down. Y'all know I talk about, you know, my non-existent hippage, right? So anytime I dress myself, I try to give the illusion of hippage. I try to give the illusion of curves. But I classify, I classify myself as a triangle because I have broad shoulders. Even though I have a small frame, I have broad shoulders. The reason why I'm saying that is because spaghetti straps and like really skinny sleeveless tops, you will rarely see me just wearing a spaghetti strap top or like one of those bodycon dresses. Why? Because it's going to hug me in here and then I'm going to have on these skinny spaghetti straps, which is going to place an emphasis on my shoulders and make me look even broader than I am. It's, it's the exact same thing with someone who has an athletic build. They have tight on top and tight on bottom. If you have an athletic shape, I would suggest to you to maybe do like tight on top. Do something that will cinch in that waist or give the illusion and then have some volume, okay? 
The reason why you can't find your personal style, which I guess these two are interchangeable, is because you're copying someone else's style. Nine times out of 10, they have a very different body figure than you do, and then you don't know how to dress your body, okay? Number five, you are not willing to experiment. You guys know that I love statement tops, statement shoes, and statement earrings. That is core when it comes to my aesthetic, when it comes to my closet. You go upstairs in my closet right now, you will see all types of statement shoes, statement earrings, and statement tops. That might be uncomfortable for somebody else, but it doesn't hurt to try it, right? Five years ago, or let's say even maybe 10 years ago, my style was somewhat different. I still have the core when it comes to the classic and the sophisticated and just being, you know, dressing very ladylike. But my statement game, I guess you could say, because of where I am in my life, my statement game has been up, right? You guys remember the Zara top that's right here. You guys remember the Ula Johnson um, statement sweater dress. You guys remember the Bottega Veneta statement circle skirt, right? Those are, there is an element to those pieces that is core to my aesthetic, but I have also stepped outside of my comfort zone. I will give you a perfect example. If you are someone who is very much like a neutral person, you do the blacks and the whites and the beiges and the tans and the grays, that does not mean, and then you're also like very classic with it. That does not mean that you run to Nordstrom Rack and you buy a neon green mini pleather skirt. That's not what I mean. Start slow or start start with something that is not going to make you so uncomfortable that you're not going to that you're not going to want to step outside of your house and then it's just going to sit in your closet and you have defeated the purpose of experimenting. Step outside of the box, put your pinky toe, but don't put your entire foot, right? I'll give you the perfect example. Um, I, like I, like I said, when it comes to my aesthetic, I'm very classic. I love to step outside, but I'm not going to step all the way outside. Me stepping out in a full on pleather or a full on leather outfit with a jacket, boots, spikes, that's too much. If I were to step outside of the house and really before I left the house, they would have probably asked me if I was feeling okay, right? Start with, for me, I would probably start with a midi length. I would probably say maybe like a chocolate brown or a black leather skirt and then add some type of classic element to that. Stick with your core, but don't be, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, step outside of the box. And with me, with the leather skirt, and then let's say putting on a turtleneck, that would make me feel comfortable because I've stepped outside of my comfort zone, but I've also brought it back to my core with the turtleneck. And lastly, the sixth reason, your life is in transition. And I will give you three examples. Let's say you're a new mom. The chances of you going out every Saturday night or going to cocktail hour, probably not going to happen. You're going to be sleep deprived. You're going to be changing diapers and you're going to be breastfeeding or bottle. You're going to be busy. You're a new mom. Your life is in transition. So your wardrobe might have to change. It's probably going to become a little bit more casual. And then once you get a grasp on things, not saying to lose yourself, but you have to acknowledge where you are in your life, right? You're in a transition, acknowledge it. And then when you've gotten acclimated to the adjustment, then you can start, you know, not necessarily being yourself again, but then you can start buying, you know, the clothes that you were used to buying, right? The second one, which we hear about all the time with your life being in transi transition is a new job. You might have to get a new wardrobe. You might have to start buying new things, right? Let's say you are a college student. Let's say you are a law student and to get by, you were working at Foot Locker or Forever 21 or here locally, Flower Child. I know that as an employee of Flower Child, because we eat there so much, <laughs> that they allow you to wear your regular clothes. If you just got out of law school and you're going to start, you're going to start speaking to clients and you're going to start being in the office, you're going to need a new wardrobe. It's a transition in your life. You're going to be needing suits. You're going to be needing button downs. You're going to be needing, you know, uh, ballet flats, heels, a briefcase, a very nice bag to carry all of your legal briefs and all of that, right? Your life is in transition. And then the last one is you move. Let's say you move from a Seattle, Washington all the way to Miami. While you were in Seattle, you had five parkas, five pair of rain boots, 20 pair of wool socks, and a whole bunch of warm leggings. You're not necessarily going to need all of that when you're going to be transitioning or moving to Miami, right? You'll be able to break out the bikinis and the sunglasses and the summer dresses and the shorts and the tank tops. Your life is in transition. And of course you need some time 
you know, to, to get acclimated to that. But this goes back to the very first one when we're talking about the fantasy self. You're not going to have the same wardrobe that you had when you were in Seattle now that you have moved to Miami, okay? So those are all the tips that I have for you about your personal style. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I just wanna remind you here on YouTube, I do upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And of course, you know right here, I'll put my Instagram handle. Thank you so much for hanging out with you guys. Bye.